a lot of people express that this is a courageous mission. It feels like there is a long process of people forgetting their power. It's not a heroism thing, it's a responsibility. The heroes are actually them people in Gaza. We're actually here because we think they're heroes. Uh, my name is Grana Hamida, and I'm a Palestinian. Currently, I live in Al also known as New Zealand. Kiora, I'm Yusuf Samur, also a Palestinian. I met Rana at a demonstration in Auckland, and also known as Tamuki Makoto. And here we are, we've been on the ship for a month and a half more. We're on the Hamdala. We're heading towards liberation. Breaking the siege is vital. The journey of going onto different ports and meeting a lot of people is a form of breaking the siege over what we as a collective can and cannot do. And this is huge, it's very important because this is what will affect our present and future. The people who are oppressed already or the ones that are not and think that it's not my zoo, not my monkeys, to realize that we are all in the same ship together. If not now, then we're. So it does not get tighter and tighter until it suffocates not only the people in Gaza, but everyone that is connected to their humanity. It has to be your own. And they say there's a siege on Gaza. I would argue that Gaza's the only place that's still liberating. It's so clear that the siege is actually on the whole world, on what they can say or who they can help, where they even invest their money and energy around the whole world and Gaza. It is exposing how imprisoned the world is. The closer we get to Gaza, the more we feel this pressure and weight. I was on ship to Gaza in 2018. I took part in the pilgrimage for just over two months for the same reason that I'm doing it now. From the get-go, same with 2018, I was coming at this with an idea that I won't be going on the last lap because I know how Palestinians are treated in that part of the world, in the homeland, and I know the dangers involved in such a mission with a Palestinian being on board. I'll be treated differently to anyone else on this ship if and when it's seized. And the closer we've gotten, and the crazier the genocide has become, Israel can get away with anything. And it seems like nobody's gonna stop it. My heart is telling me, of course you have to go, because there's your people, be with them, and remind them that we haven't forgotten about them. But then there's the mind, and the mind says, no, you need to do what's best for the cause. And what's best for the cause is for me to be alive. So for now, my intention is to not go all the way to this. Even if I do have a New Zealand passport, this is not going to be protective. I'm willing to sacrifice my life. I don't have anything to lose. But then also when I look at what's happening, it is uncomprehendable, unimaginable that I feel like I would be in more use if I don't go the whole way. And it's really painful for the people and my brothers and sisters and families in Odessa. But the main reason is as an acknowledgement and as a responsibility that I feel towards the people that I am sailing for, because this is a long-term journey of liberation and it's not gonna finish on my family in Palestine. I'm going to work towards the liberation of Palestine, towards the liberation of Sudan and Congo and the minds of the human beings starting from mine. And I will preserve the life that I gifted to do so to the last breath that I will have. We can do it together and we can balance this world. This is a message of love, of humanity against occupation, starvation, colonization, Zionism. Don't lose hope. Just think of the children, think of the people there. Think of how strong their perseverance is, their struggle, their smooth in Arabic, and let that be a fuel and stay strong.